Now, tofu is, is this Asian food. It's uh, made from bean curd. And usually when you go order in a restaurant, it comes in these rectangular pieces. On a lot of computers, when fonts had problems and they didn't have them, they were missing that character, you would see a square rectangle. And many, many years ago, a lot of users, they would refer to the little square boxes they saw on the screen as tofu. One of the goals of this project was to support every language and every character. So one of the things we want to do is make sure there's no tofu for all our users. So hence, we called it Noto, short for no tofu. Google started as a search company. Our mission statement is we want to make all knowledge universally accessible and useful to people. And so we've embarked on other things beyond search, like building these devices like Android, like Chromebooks. So we really need it, fonts that really look good on these new types of devices. The quality of the design, the quality of the rendering. I really wanted to make these devices work in all languages. You know, over 800 languages, over 100,000 characters. I don't think anyone has ever done that before. We really needed a, a reliable partner a company that had the ability to create really well-engineered fonts. So Monotype was a great match for these requirements. Early on, we established a way of making a proposal to Google of what the typeface would look like. Screen grabs and pictures of, of typefaces in use, especially in these minority scripts where very few people um, have ever made typefaces. We relied on signage or engravings on buildings and that sort of a thing as reference material to show to Google what these new scripts might look like. Some of these smaller used languages or some of these more academic or dead languages, I think it's really important to preserve these things. And without this digital capability, it's much more difficult for that cultural growth to occur. In each of these cases, we basically were making it possible for that language community to create a digital patrimony or heritage with their literature and their traditions. When we start with a new script, if I'm not already familiar with it, I collect as much information on it as possible. And then the secondary stage, we look at style. We basically dive in and immerse ourselves as much as possible within that culture and try to produce something that's acceptable and pleasing. If we don't, um, we risk alienating that group. Tibetan has no typographic tradition whatsoever. What little has been done in Tibetan typography in the last uh, two decades is based entirely on replicating calligraphic style. We had collaboration from a Tibetan monastery whose manager gave us access to the monks to review the writing. Basically, it had to pass muster with them. The designer on this project was Toshi Omagari. Basically, he wanted to learn enough about the tradition of the calligraphy and the, the look, the desired look in, in Tibetan writing. And in fact, by learning the various calligraphic traditions, he was able to produce a typeface that looked contemporary, but pleasing to the practiced eye. The scope of the project was so big, it's a, a really a change in mindset on how you're going to work. That you know you're not going to be done tomorrow, you're not going to be done next week. You have to give it time to the whole process to play itself out. For me, as a product manager, I think the most challenging part is to find the right person to review the fonts. The first thing we do is to send an email to everybody in Google saying that, Hi, is there anybody speaking like Malayalam or Telugu? Uh, we can find a lot of people to review these languages. But sometimes for minor languages like Cherokee, we cannot find in-house experts. Then we need to find some friends of this Cherokee community, and then through the friends of the community, we get them like review the fonts. Initially, the idea was to have a unified set of scripts and writing systems. From there, it grew to include multiple weights, the number of characters included in just the Latin fonts is 3,300 characters per weight. So it grew quite uh, geometrically from the original concept. 
it was a big investment. It was a big investment of time, of engineering, of money. And the other thing about this fund, it's open source. So it's not just for our products, it's for all products you know, that want to use it. Any person in the world that wants to use these fonts, they're at their disposal. Basically, we got emails every day saying that, can we use this phone in, in our automation system? Can we use it in the TV on the flight? Yes, our answer is always yes, you can use it. Feel free. The aim is to provide digital representation to all the scripts in the Unicode standard. That is something that many different language communities could not afford to do on their own. And Google has been the benefactor in funding this work. And in many cases, we've produced the first font ever to serve a particular language community. You know, we're not quite done yet. We've got the sans serif family pretty much done, and we're in progress with the uh, serif family. And I think that the quality of it the design work we put into it, I think we really came up with a really good product, solving something that no one else has done before.